Hi there. Terry Duncan here with Cut, Color, and Create. Welcome to my channel. I am so excited today because I'm participating with other Alta New educators in our quarterly video hop called Background Bonanza. There is tons of inspiration in this hop, and my fellow educators are so, so talented. So be sure to check out their videos as well. But for now, let's get started with our card. We're going to make a wedding card today. It's going to be a square card, five and a half by five and a half. And so I've already pre-cut a color panel to five by five. That will be an accent behind the image. Our main card panel is going to be vellum. I've got a heavy vellum there. I have already made an envelope for the card. Check out the tutorial uh, linked in the description below for how to make your own custom envelopes. Then I've got a piece of pearl cardstock that I'm going to use to make my card base. I've already heat embossed the sentiment that I'm going to use. I've also included down in the, the description how to heat emboss if you'd like to take a look at that tutorial. Then I've got a couple of brand new products that I just picked up from Altenew. This one you can see a little better than, because I've got the stencil all covered up, but I've got a, a stencil and a coordinating embossing folder that we're going to use. That'll make up our background, which actually becomes our focal point as well. So again, embossing folder and a stencil set. Then I did use the Inked Lotus stamp. Uh, congratulations for my sentiment. We're going to use a scoring board and a bone folder to make our card base. Adhesives that we're going to use are little glue dots for attaching the uh, vellum to the card base. We're going to use a tape runner. And then I love Alta News Instant Dimension Foam Tape to pop things up. My trusty stamp wheel for our stenciling. Then I have a number of brushes, uh, other tools. I've got a, a fussy cutter scissors. I have a blending tool with the domed foam top. I do have my favorite blending tools, which are my Alta New Minis in there. And I've got a reverse tweezers. So we'll be using those. Then the ink that we're going to be using are as follows. Dusty Pink, Toasted Mauve, Frayed Leaf, navy and pure graphite these are all the new fresh dye inks if you've not tried them you really need to they are awesome then i also needed a little darker blue so i'm using my uh, crisp dye ink arctic mountain so i believe that's all of the tools and supplies we're going to use so let's get started I'm just going to get these out of the way so that they don't cause my autofocus to go crazy. And what we'll begin by doing is creating the card base. If you've never created a card base before, I do also have down in the description how to do that in a tutorial, but we'll do one here to go through it as well. So my card, as I told you before, is five and a half by five and a half. So I cut a piece of cardstock five and a half, the short direction, 11, the long direction. And then we're going to score right down the middle to make the card base. So I always push the short side into the left border or edge of the score tool. And then I don't push this edge, the top edge, all the way up. Why? Because if you do, then when you put your bone folder in there, it doesn't reach all the way to the top. The, the bone folder, you know, curved like that. So it doesn't reach all the way up. So if you just 
set that down a little bit, you'll be able to get the whole panel scored. Now, because it's five and a half inches, I'm coming five and a half inches from that edge there over to five and a half inches. I'm going to place my bone folder right in where the score mark is. And then I'm going to carefully, because your bone folder can pop out of those ridges, I'm going to carefully pull down the cardstock, scoring it as I go. Now, I'm just going to repeat over that just to make sure I get a good impression. Now that my cardstock is scored, I'm going to move my scoring board away and then I'm going to bend away from the score. So you always want to remember that your score is the valley and you're going to make a mountain with it. Now, one of the tricks I use to make sure that my card base is square, meaning that all the edges match up, is I turn my card stick up on end like this, and then I do my bending. And as I bend, I just carefully do that to make sure the fibers go along with the bend as you're going. And then I hold down on the top. So I'm using my work surface to hold it even at the bottom. I'm right-handed, so I'm using my left hand to hold it tight on the work surface, and then I'm going to carefully finish that fold. Now, holding that in place, you can see that the edges are good and even. What's really cool about the scoring board is that it makes a nice even card base. Then I'm gonna hold that in place and I'm gonna burnish the fold just to make it, to set it. And I'm gonna turn it over and do the same thing. And then I like to give it one more go on this edge of the bone folder. And turn it over one last time. And there we have it. That is our pretty card base. Okay, next we're going to emboss our vellum. So I'm gonna get my embossing folder out. And you'll see it measures, it measures right at five and a half. I have cut a piece of vellum to five and a half. So I am going to place that into my embossing folder. There are little lines on it on the edges to help you get it square. Okay, now off camera, I'm gonna run this through my die cutting and embossing machine and I'll be right back. Okay. Isn't that beautiful? I just love it. Okay, now we're going to get our stamp wheel out. We're gonna do some stenciling. So I like to set my cardstock, or in this case, vellum, right in the center of my stamp wheel. And I'm trying to get it straightened just because I'm kind of anal that way. And it's not going to stick down. Vellum has some different properties, so I'm going to use a little crafter's tape to hold it down just so it doesn't move while I'm Okay, next I'm gonna get my stencil out. The thing I love about Altenew's stencils is that they have guides, especially with the layered ones. So we're gonna start with the gown. This is a very easy stencil to locate where it is that you need to match the embossing. And stencils usually attach very well to the stamp wheel, but because my cardstock is about the same size as my stencil, I am going to tape that down. Now, we're kind of using the guide just to guide us along the way. I am going to use my 
blending tool. This is the one I use for pig gold pigment. So that's what I'll be using. And I just realized I failed to share with you that one other supply that we're using is Antique Gold Pigment Ink. So I am going to load that up onto my blending tool. And then I'm going to get a piece of paper towel. And the reason I'm doing that is because I like to dab off onto the paper towel just so I don't get a big glob of ink on my project. So I'm going to concentrate on her booty. Okay, so starting lightly first just to see how the vellum is going to react with my ink. It's, it's going on beautifully. And so I'm just picking up those designs of her gown. Very light. And then you can see in our guide that they have some shadowing in their example. I'm just going to go with the flow of the dress to kind of pick up some of the lines of, of the gown. I'm not going to do it exact. I'm not changing the color or anything. I'm just using the gold. And you can see that just the dimension in the embossing folder picks up some of that gold. And then there would be shadows down around her dress. So I'm going to add some shadows down here at the base. Just all around here. And I don't know if the camera's picking that up, but that sheen from the, um, the uh, pigment ink is just gorgeous. I'm just adding that shading in around the base of her dress. I'm going to add a little more up here. And I think we're in pretty good shape. Let's see. Maybe a little more here. Okay, that's it for our first layer. And that turned out beautifully. Okay, our next layer is our groom. Now, I'll point out to you, this is a very delicate stencil. So you gotta be careful when you're stenciling. Now, what I like to do is make sure that I can kind of see the ink that I'm matching up to so that I get a good positioning of my next stencil. And I think I've got that in good shape. I am gonna tape this one down too. It is stuck down pretty good at the top. So I think I'm in good shape. Now, one of the things I wasn't real careful about was the pigment ink. It could still be wet. So you wanna be kind of careful um, when you're working around that. Now, the other thing I wanna point out is that there is a place that's cut out here. So we might wanna mask um, that off just to make sure that we don't get any ink, any place but where we want it. And there's a demarcation line here as well, which I don't think we're in, at risk of hurting our project with. Okay, so now what I'm looking for is my navy ink. And 
we're going to go with a very light hand. So I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to dab it off and then very lightly start adding in. I'm going to hold that just so that it doesn't bend back. And I'm just going to start to lightly blend over the stencil. Now I, I do this in several passes, so I'm going to load up again and I'm going to add a little more shading on this right hand side where she's leaning into him. I'm going to hold my stencil with my left hand and you can see I'm starting to add a little more shading in his jacket. Let me get over here in his left arm. And then I want to get his right leg and the inside of his left leg. Now I think I want my groom's tux to be a little bit darker. So that's why I went with my Arctic Mountain. So I'm going to clean my brush off a little bit and then I'm going to pick up some of that darker blue and just repeat. I do think I'll clean off my stencil just so I don't contaminate. There's both blues, but I'm fussy about that, so. And then one last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull out that pure graphite, the dark gray. And I'm just going to add a little more shadow in there. So again, I'm going to use a rag to clean off my stencil so I don't contaminate my brush. And then just add a little bit of the gray. See how it just makes it kind of, finishes it off. Now I'm gonna come back with my, my navy because it's a little bit too light in here. I'm just gonna add a little more of that, blend that all together. There we go. Okay. So I'm going to remove the stencil. Beautiful. Okay, now. Now there's this just this little shoe stencil. that I'm just gonna hold that in place and use the ink that's on my brush to stencil in my shoe. And there's just a little bit more stenciling to do. So the last little bits that we have to do are to pencil in the flowers. And those little pieces are right here. So you can see these little flowers right here. And I'm just going to position those just right. So there's this little 
flower here that's easy to see. And that helps you align perfectly. Altenu are masters at giving you little tricks to be able to align their stencils. Now I'm going to get out my pink brush and I'm going to lightly color in those flowers. I don't want them to overpower our bride and groom. And then we're going to add a little green. Same thing, we're going to find a little place on this stencil we can align with. I use this one over here and this one by his arm again. And this time we're going to use frayed leaf. Okay. okay. There's one more thing that I am going to do. And that is, I'm going to remove my cardstock. I'm just going to use a little detail brush and I'm going to pick up some of that toasted moth and I'm just going to shadow the centers of these flowers. Just to give them a little dimension. Not a lot of color. And that's it. Okay. Our stenciling is done. So really all that's left to be done to make our card is to assemble it. To do that, we're gonna bring back our card base. We're gonna bring our color panel into play. And I think I'm going to make this a top folding card. So I'm going to make sure that the fold is on the top. I am going to take my tape runner and I'm just going to apply the adhesive to the back side of my color accent. You could pop this up if you want to. I like the idea of just fastening it right to the front of the card base. So I always get up. I apologize if my head gets in the way. I wanna make sure that this is good and square. And even on all sides. And now I did purposefully make the stencil a little bit bigger than what I need. What I'm going to do is trim this down to just leave an eighth of an inch around all the edges. So I am gonna pull up my little paper trimmer. And being that this color accent was five inches, I need my panel to be four and three quarters.
And I, I trimmed it off at the side there because I wanted to keep this pretty little flower. Four and three quarters by four and three quarters. And that will sit nicely on top there. Now, the next thing we're going to do is fussy cut out our sentiment. So I like to use the Cutter B fussy cut scissors. And I always cut my sentiment down to closer to the size. And then you always want to move the sentiment, not your scissors. So I'm moving as I cut. And I think it's prettier if you kind of follow some of the dimension on the sentiment. There. I use a no stick scissors and we're going to need our instant dimension tape. And I'm just going to should work. So I'm going to pop up the sentiment. Removing the backing paper. And then I like to use my reverse tweezers to align my sentiment and get it placed. So Place that about there, making sure it's good and straight. And I'm gonna fasten that down. Now, why did I put that on first? Well, with vellum, you can see adhesive when you attach it to the back side. So I wanted to have a place where I could attach ad adhesive to fasten my vellum to the card base behind that. So next I'm gonna get my glue dots out and I'll show you how I like to do them. I just cut one at a time off and I'm going to place these little dots behind a place that I think will be well hidden. So for instance, behind this flower. And I use my fingernail to burnish it real well. And then I'm just going to place these along the card um, so that it sticks well without uh, curling up or, um, or showing. And you can see the dot if you hold it up. That's why I keep picking that up and setting it back down. Okay. Now, now that I've got all of those glue dots burnished down, I'm gonna remove the backing paper. And again, I'm going to stand up. It's 
so that I get pink evenly distributed around the edges of the card. Sorry about my head there. So that is our pretty card. You can see it glistening. Opens that way. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure and click on the subscribe button. And if you click on the bell, you'll get notified anytime I pub publish a new video. Be sure to check out the other educators on the rest of the hop. Have fun. Thanks for joining me. And bye for now.